National charities Help the Hospices and Together for Short Lives have launched a new volunteer resource. Volunteering Vital to Our Future is designed to help organisations to support this growing workforce. Dr Ros Scott is the author. I think there's been a growing recognition that volunteers can do more and they have more skills to offer and a number of um, hospices have had developed some very innovative projects. The resource highlights a number of case studies where volunteers are playing a significant role and it's been designed to be accessed by staff working with volunteers at all levels. Trustees, senior managers, clinical staff, in, uh, voluntary services managers, indeed anybody who had responsibility for volunteering within the organisation. Helen and Douglas House in Oxford cares for people up to the age of 35. Wendy Bridge is the volunteer manager at the hospice who was recruited to make some significant changes to their programme. We spent a long time looking at how we could actually increase volunteer numbers in-house. We had the traditional volunteers which were administration, reception um, and fundraising but we really had um, hardly any on the care team. The results have seen the hospice grow from having just one volunteer on the care team to almost 50. Fireman Mark Shambrook was looking for such an opportunity. So I just did a bit of research and to be honest I thought that Helen Douglas House would be probably the furthest out of my comfort zone that I could think of. You planned? Mark works as a clinical volunteer which is defined as someone who has face-to-face -face contact with guests. He says it is sometimes the simplest things that give the greatest reward. You need to be a specific thing. Just being around someone you've only met three hours earlier and suddenly being OK with them and having a bond uh, while the time you leave is excellent. Kate Bartley has taken up the role of coordinating this army of volunteers but says it is essential to have an effective recruitment process. You know, we have to get the interview right, we've got to do our bit and get in the right type of volunteer. Not everybody's right for this role. Kate has seen volunteers recruited from all walks of life. We have retired professionals, you know, retired nurses, retired um, physiotherapists, lawyers, um, directors of companies, we've got students who want to go into medicine, students who don't want to go into medicine. They even have volunteers training to be monks. Lovely. Thank you very much. Like Paul Kennedy, one of the newest recruits who began his training on reception. Which actually is a great uh, starting point because you get to meet everybody that comes in, you get to meet all of the young people that are coming here to stay and their parents as well. Um, so it's a really great training ground for volunteers. Yeah. I'll just put her over to you, Lisa. And Paul gets out just as much as he puts in. I think when you give, you get a lot back in return. I certainly have got a lot back from, from Helen Douglas House. They're, they're really good to their volunteers. <laughs> they look after you. It's a family. Managing these volunteers comes with a whole host of challenges, which are all tackled in the new resource. This includes boundaries, health and safety risks, and, of course, the emotional impact of working in such a sensitive environment. The volunteers who we choose deliberately come in and they are incredibly resilient and end up, and I think as you've heard and witnessed, um, getting as much back as they give. The volunteers at Helen and Douglas House are estimated to be worth the equivalent of one and a half million pounds. Clearly a resource worth investing in. This is Rosie Brown reporting for eHospice.